Fuck. <gasps> what? Oh shit. So fall from grace, bro. Welcome back to Sidemen Reacts with myself, Josh, JJ, and Toby. Now you've seen some of the Sidemen cheat in game shows, <clears throat> Ethan and Harry. But today we are gonna see some of the biggest game show cheaters ever caught in real life. Is everyone ready? Give me a little cough in the crowd. Mm. <clears throat> Yeah, you see what I did there? A little tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see, I see. All right, let's get it. A good game show is a well-oiled million-dollar machine built to ensure both fun and fairness. But with tons of cash on the line, some contestants just can't resist the urge to find a way to beat or cheat the system and win big. That is a fur. Here are a few of the biggest game show cheaters in history, or at least the ones who were caught. Charles Ingram. Here he goes. Just a millionaire one. Yeah. Who wants to be a millionaire really wants contestants to win, since it's just good TV to see a regular Joe get rich. <laughs> Even with multiple lifelines available to contestants for especially difficult trivia questions, that just wasn't enough for disgraced Army Major Charles Ingram, who appeared in the British edition of the show in 2001. According to Vice, Ingram stationed two people in the audience, his wife Diana and his friend Taekwon Widdock, both former contestants. As he carefully read off each of the four multiple choice answers out loud, he'd listen for a cough, which was allegedly a signal from his plants as to which answer was the correct one. Using this ridiculous method pioneered by cheating high school students, Ingram actually won the million pound grand prize. He should have flopped it just Wait, before a million. what the hell? The scheme was ultimately discovered and all three were found guilty of, quote, procuring the execution of a valuable security by deception, or in simpler terms, fraud. Wait, so she was getting filmed the whole time and still doing it? They filmed the audience. Yeah, because she just actually had to cough, right? Yeah. Right, Sid. He'd read out a question and she'd say, oh, like, oh, A, B. And he'd start saying, say, say, I think it's C, and then go through it again. And she coughs at A and, he, and he's like, it could be A, though. How are they picking these contestants? Because they, they were both previous contestants on the show. That's what they said, right? Yeah, but they, they applied to be in the audience, right? He said, like, oh, my friends want to be in the audience for when I go on the show. Yeah, but I'm saying, what are the odds that two of his friends have been on the show before him? They probably knew each other, right? Well, they all applied for it together, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but, like, Man. how how did they know all the answers? But between three of them... Because they were two brains together, yeah. yeah. Between three smart people, you're going to know... You're going to More than know one. enough yeah. to win. Oh, shit, fair. And the show's geared up, so, like, the questions are set so they're hard enough that you'll get like halfway through but one person can't make it the whole way but it'll be like the average person will get half the questions right kind of thing uh, yeah mad do you know what? they should have bailed out early yeah. <laughs> mil, yeah all three received suspended prison sentences and were fined a combined total of fifty-five thousand pounds which charles allegedly never paid they went to prison ingram was also stripped of his title by the army board after 17 years of service what for cheating on who wants to be a millionaire yeah huh? as if that weren't enough bad karma Charles Ingram later slipped on an apple while mowing his lawn and cut off three of his toes. Fuck. <gasps> what? Oh, shit. That's a fool from grace, bro. Sorry, Charlie. Adriana Abania. In 2014, Spanish model Adriana Abania appeared on Pasa Palabra, Spain's version of Password. Abania's blatant cheating scheme occurred during a segment where she had to listen to song clips and identify the name and performer. The game had barely started when the host and other contestants noticed that she kept looking at a phone she had hidden in her lap. She'd oh been using God. the music identification app Shazam. She was called out <laughs> on it right on the show, oh but everyone God. just laughed it off. The host, Christian Galvez, even said that she deserved a special prize for cheating so brazenly. Oh, a few wow. days later, Abania made her intentions clear, saying, No one told me that I could not cheat. I mean... <laughs> Well, she's like showing the phone. <laughs> Khaled El Etani. Millionaire Hot Seat is an Australian spinoff of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. And in 2014, a cocky 19-year-old law student named Khaled El Etani appeared on the show and racked up winnings of $100,000. 19? Oh, where's the cellophane? Where's the cellophane? What's up? I want the cellophane. No, I only get that for two fifty. dollars right? Did I get the cellophane? After the show aired, he told the media that he cheated. Well, sort of saying, I didn't play the game, I played the man. Huh? What? According to El Catetani, he claimed to nail correct answers to the questions not through knowledge, but by watching the body language of host Eddie McGuire as he read off the multiple choice possibilities. Oh, Admitting, if you look at it, you see me working Eddie McGuire. I'm reading every single subtle thing about his face. He also watched the studio audience behind McGuire to see which choice made their faces light up. 
In the end, El Catetani got to keep his money. I rate that's that. Not you know? no, that's not cheating. That's, 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 that's high level. That's big brain. That's high IQ. That is. That's top psychology. Yeah, that's sick. That's like something you see in a film, right? Where they, yeah. like, they yeah. go in like with the psychology and like. Same thing like Limitless, where yeah. you like you're taking the yeah. pill to be like, yeah, I can now yeah. read everyone's minds. I can see what you're doing. <laughs> that's, that's big brain, man. Fair play. Because utilizing a poker strategy for a trivia game technically isn't against the rules. When asked about his plans for his winnings, El Catetani simply said, quote, I didn't win anything. I earned it. Uh, Terry Nice. <laughs> the Price is Right seems like a difficult game show to win. Guy looks like Joe Biden. As <laughs> a shout. Because it involves guessing the, quote, actual retail price of items, which never seem to be anywhere near what you'd see in an actual retail store. So when Terry Nice put in a bid of $23,743 during a showcase showdown in 2008, and hit the prize's retail price exactly, oh, it defied all the odds. Oh, How do you do it? Hasn't happened since 72 or 73, right in the nose. Esquire's profile of Nice revealed his secrets. The man is an analytical genius. Nice has been both an expert blackjack player and an award-winningly accurate meteorologist. I'm Terry Nice. You may be better off sitting at home roasting your nuts on an open fire than going out on the roads tomorrow. Nice told Esquire that he and his wife recorded episodes of The Price is Right every day for four months, then memorized the prices of all the items the show used, and frequently reused in the Showcase Showdown segment. From there, it was just basic math. It wasn't even a new strategy. How did you settle on 2140? I seen that on there last week, and that was the exact price. I know that's what <laughs> <laughs> Host Drew Carey floated another theory. In the audience during the taping was Ted Slauson, a regular price attendee and one-time contestant who had also amassed an encyclopedic memory of showcase prices. Carey and show producers seemed to think that Slauson colluded with Nice and used hand signals to tell him the perfect price, an allegation that both men deny. Nice got to keep his winnings because despite their suspicions, the show couldn't prove he did anything wrong other than being really good at math. Get those nerds! <laughs> Corilla Barbecue. In 2011, the New York City based food truck Corilla Barbecue was eliminated from the Great Food Truck Race, a reality show competition in which hopeful street chefs compete for a grand prize of $50,000. The team with the lowest sales gets eliminated, hence, Corilla's desperate, if not ill conceived attempt at staying alive with some bogus profit. Unfortunately, Twenty guys tried to cheat. It was clear that you put twenty-seven hundred dollars of your own money in the till. The owners of the Korean Mexican fusion truck maintained their innocence, despite a confidentiality agreement that barred them from speaking out in too much detail. Food Network originally only said that the team was eliminated from the show after making quote an unfortunate decision. It wasn't until a 2016 interview with KoreanAmericanStory.org that Corilla Barbecue owner Eddie Song finally cleared up what really happened. Apparently, the team decided to get creative when facing the challenge of not being able to sell meat while competing in Memphis. Song and his crew, quote, formed a little partnership with one of the top Memphis-style barbecue joints and ended up selling empty tortillas and sending the customers elsewhere to get free meat. Ultimately, they bent the rules and got busted. Oh. oh. I think that's okay. But... Yeah, that's, uh, that's not that deep. So that's, that's like enterprising. That's not cheating. Mm. <laughs> but hey. It's a, it's a show, so. Yeah. yeah. The 21 Gang. 21. While most game show cheats are simply over-eager rogue contestants, the scandal surrounding the 1956 game show 21 involved the show's producers and served as the basis for the 1994 movie Quiz Show. According to Charles Van Doren's New Yorker account of the scandal, producers Al Friedman, Jack Barry, and Dan Enright colluded with contestants Herb Stemple and Charles Van Doren in some carefully choreographed high-stakes game show drama. After around six weeks of coach winning for Stemple, the show saw a dip in ratings, possibly due to the unlikable nature of the quirky New York postal clerk. Enter Charles Van Doren, a handsome English professor from Columbia University and the son of a prominent poet. He was similarly coached, and after some staged episodes that ended in ties, Van Dorn eventually overtook Stemple. Both contestants walked away with a bunch of cash, and ratings were up. Win-win, right? Wrong. No one believed Stemple's claims about the plague of game show fixing until a notebook full of future quiz answers was found on the set of a completely different game show. Stemple what? testified to a grand jury, which eventually led to congressional hearings and an amendment to the Communications Act of 1934, making it officially illegal to fix quiz shows. It didn't much matter because the networks were so spooked 
that they abruptly canceled many of their primetime game shows anyway. Russet. We're looking for nuts now. We're looking for nuts. <laughs> <laughs> nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I love how they just threw that clip in for Benson. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. random, yeah. Nothing to do with the video. Anyone cheated in the Simon game show? Come clean now. Um, <laughs> nah. no, I don't. I've actually, I've, I've looked at whiteboards in, uh, in how well do you know videos. <laughs> wow. I've definitely done that. Tried it. We've all Take done that. Take him to court. Take him to court. <laughs> Congressional <laughs> hearing. <laughs>